Hello, so today we will discuss an algorithm to compute or matching uh, in a graph. So, let us begin with some definitions. Let us suppose G is a is an undirected graph, then uh, a subset M of the edges is called a matching. of G, if no two edges of M uh, share the same end vertex. So, let us take an example. Suppose, we have a, a graph like this. In that case, these three edges, which are marked by these lines, it constitutes set M is a matching. The reason is the end vertices of these edges, namely these two, let us label them 1 and 2, 3 and 4, 5 and 6. None of the three end, uh, the, the, the none of the end vertices of the three edges are common. Okay. This is called matching, because you are matching two vertices, you are pairing up two vertices. Um, and, and in this case, we have got such three pairs. Then we say that vert, vertex x or vertices x and y are set to be matched with each other if if edge x y belongs to the matching. If uh, a vertex z uh, in in the graph is not matched with any vertex in M then z is said to be unmatched. Okay. The size of a matching m is the cardinality of M so the number of edges in the set M is called the size of the matching now we also are interested in the size. So, if we say uh, matching is maximal, that would mean that M is not properly contained in any other matching. So, M 
is said to be maximal if it is not contained in any other um, matching of G properly. Besides, a, ma a matching is said to be maximum if there is no matching with greater cardinality. M is said to be a maximum matching if there is no matching of G with greater size. Then it is obvious that every maximum matching is bound to be a maximal matching. So, uh, in this case for example, if I add one more edge, this is a maximal matching, because I cannot add any more edge to m without violating the condition of uh, sharing in n dual type. This is not valid. In fact, this is a maximal matching. You cannot add any more edge, but this need not be a maximum matching. Uh, that we will actually later on try to figure out. Uh, another important definition is that of an alternating path. Let G be a graph and M be a matching in G. Then we can define uh, an alternating path in the following fashion. Then a path v 1, v 2, v 3, v 4, v k is said to be an alternating path, if, if the first edge is a non matching edge, second is a matching edge, third is a non matching edge, fourth is a matching edge and so on or the first is a matching edge, second is a non matching edge and then again a matching and so on. So, if successive edges of the path alternately belong to M and E minus M. Now, in this context we define one more notion and the notion of an augmenting path. An alternating path is said to be an 
मेंटेन पाथ इफ द फर्स्ट एंड द लास्ट वर्टेक्स इन इट आर अनमैच्ड इन दैट केस if this and this are unmatched vertices then clearly the first edge has to be a non matching edge then of course a matching and a non matching and it should end with a non matching edge so now we will describe a, a useful result uh which will help us compute a maximum matching and the result is that if g is a graph and m is a matching in g then m is a maximum matching if and only if g comma m has no augmenting path so let's just go back to the figure in this uh, figure there are two one and two unmatched vertices so if you look at this if you walk along 7 3 4 8 what you find is it's an alternating path where the first and the last are unmatched so according to theorem this is not a maximum matching although we are not going to prove that theorem i can show you one important uh, connection how i can enhance this matching the moment i have found an augmenting path i'll switch the edges as the the, the non edges the the non matching edges will be put in the matching set and the matching edges in the non matching so this is how i'm going to switch the edges and what you notice is that the resulting matching is still a valid matching but we have one more matching edge namely there are four matching edges hence this is a bigger matching than the previous one now in this case it's very obvious that this is a maximum matching uh, because there are only eight vertices and four matching edges every vertex has been matched now had it been a bigger graph maybe this was not a maximum matching in that case we would have looked for another augmenting path and we, if we continue to switch the edges on the augmenting path we will eventually end up with a maximum matching because in each step we are going to improve the size of the matching so now uh, we have found a way to compute a maximum matching but before that we need to prepare some more background so here we need to define something called an odd alternating cycle so let uh, v0 v1 v2 
के बी एन ऑट साइकिल वे वी जीरो वी वन इज ए नॉन मैचिंग एज देन वी वन वी टू बिलोंग्स टू एम एंड वी हैव एन ऑल्टरनेटिंग मेंबरशिप टू ई माइनस एम एंड एम एंड द लास्ट एज वी टू के माइनस वन सॉरी सेकेंड लास्ट एज वी टू के माइनस वन वी टू के बिलोंग्स टू एम एंड वी टू के वी जीरो इज ए नॉन मैचिंग एज सो इफ यू हैव सच ए साइकिल देन वी कॉल इट such a cycle say c then c is called an odd alternating cycle now now i'm going to talk about a transformation in a graph which we will need to do while searching an alternating cycle so let uh g be a graph v comma e and m be a matching in g and let u be the set of all unmatched vertices so there are no matching edges emerging from any of these vertices and every vertex in e uh, in v minus u is matched then we define then we define a graph h denoted by g mod u this graph is as follows so suppose our g symbolically is this graph and this is the set of vertices in g which are unmatched then we perform the following transformation we squeeze this entire set into a single vertex let's call that s and the remaining graph is left untouched what does that mean so suppose you have a vertex here which has got some edges going out of u and a few edges which are connecting to vertices in u in that case we will replace all these by a single vertex and these edges will continue so let's say these are vertices x1 x2 x3 maybe here there are more vertices x4 x5 then this vertex is connected to every one of these vertices so we lose the entire structure inside this collection of vertices but we we preserve everything here as it is so let's take a simple example if we have let's suppose v 
we have uh, this graph. Label them as 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and 8. So, uh, again coincidentally we have now 8 vertices again and 1 and 5 are unmatched. So, if this is g, then g mod u will squeeze vertex vertices 1 and 5. So, let us call this vertex 1, 5 and all the other vertices will stay as it is 2, 3, 4, 6, 7, 8. The edge structures among these vertices will be untouched. Now, one two edge will be now edge between two and vertex one five two three will be as it is three four four eight four four five so we will have this this is because of the fact that there is an edge between four and five there is a edge between 5 and 6. So, now it will be this one 6, 7 and there is an edge between 7 and 8 and 6, 7 will be a matching edge 4 and 8 this is a matching edge and 2, 3 is a matching edge. Uh, so, we have now 4 and 5, 5 and 6, 1 and 2 and 1 and 8. So, there is an edge here as well. I think this is okay. This is the result of shrinking the, the, the set of unmatched vertices, namely set of 1 and 5 into a single vertex. And now, we make a claim, what we want to do is observe what happens to an augmenting path in G, when we transform the graph into this. So, let us take this example. Suppose, we had an augmenting path that would have gone from 1 to 5 in the entire path apart from the first and the last vertex there would not have been any other unmatched vertex. In this graph of course, there are only two unmatched vertices, but even otherwise all the interbudget vertices in an augmenting path would have been matched vertices. So, in this picture that path for example, we have an augmenting path namely 1, 8, 4, 5. That path would have started here and ended here itself, right. So, it would have been 1, 4, 8 back to this. So, notice that all the intermediate vertices are matched and their matching edges are on the path. So, if you leave this alone, then the rest of the path must have even number of vertices, because they are all matched and their matchings are on the path. So, this has to be an odd cycle and it is the first and the last edges obviously are unmatched and a rest of it is an alternating uh, path. Hence, this is an odd alternating cycle. Okay. So, we make an observation that every augmenting path in G m transforms into an odd alternating 
cycle in G mod U and M. I am using the same symbol M because after all it is the same set of edges. Okay. So, now we would like to first compute something called an, an alternating breakfast uh, tree. An alternating breakfast tree is a structure such as this one. Suppose, we have a vertex S. and this vertex is unmatched, then all the vertices adjacent to S are in the first level. I will level them as 0 and this is at level 1. At this level, we will connect, uh, we, we will uh, uh, put the matching edge of this vertex, if there is one in the next level. So, we will expand and walk along the matching edge. If the matching edge is here, then we cannot expand it further. If there is no matching edge here, then we cannot do anything about it. Then all the new unmatching edges from here are expanded in the next level. Then again, if there is a matching edge from here, then we will expand to that level and so on. So, we will form such a tree, where the edges between even and odd level are unmatched and edges from odd to even level are all matching edges. So, our objective first is to compute such a tree and then we will study the structure of this tree. Now, here is the simple breakfast search routine which has been transformed slightly to be able to compute this structure. What we will do is that we will use a variable called level for every vertex. We will initialize level of S to be 0 and the set associated with this level will denote by u naught. So, u naught contains this u 1 contains these vertices and so on. So, the first statement is that just set u naught to the singleton s and set the level of s to 0. And for every other vertex, set the level to infinity. And then we begin from i equal to 1 onwards. Now, in the process, all the tree edges we will store into a set called E t. So, we initialize it to empty set. Now, as long as the previous level is non empty, we will continue to compute the next level. So, if u i minus 1 is non empty, then I initialize u i to be empty. Now, for each vertex in the level, so I pick, let us say we are looking at this level, I pick one vertex at a time. So, here we pick say v in u i minus 1, we look at its neighbors, all the vertices adjacent to v. Now, we have to differentiate between the odd and even levels, the reason being we are interested in non matching edges here, matching edges here. So, we check if i is odd, 
that means if you are looking at this level, we are trying to go from here to here, then if V w edge, if the edge is a non matching edge, V w is in E minus m and the level of w is infinity. That means, if this is v and this is w and level is infinity, which means it has not yet been encountered. In that case, we will incorporate w in u i, we will set its level to i and we will store the edge v w in set e t. And similarly, if the index i is even, that is the else part, then we do the same thing. Only thing is, we have to ensure that the edge v w is in m, it is a matching edge. The rest is identical. This is how we will be able to partition the vertices into these levels. Now, note that there might be some vertices which are not reachable by this such, those will remain in a single set called infinity, u infinity. So, in, in this program, we should actually set u infinity to be equal to v minus u naught minus u 1 then we have a partition of the vertices in u naught, u 1, u 2 and ultimately u infinity. So, now let us uh, characterize the edges which are not in the tree. So, let us just go back and build a symbolic tree. if it so happens that the two vertices which are adjacent to our starting vertex s, if they are matched together, then obviously, the matching edge will run inside level u 1, this is our u 1, u 0. The next level of course, can have many edges. Suppose, there was a non matching edge emerging from this, then it can probably go like this, it can go to uh, a lower level then it can go to arbitrarily lower level, to any level. So, maybe I can say that this goes anywhere down there. It is also possible that there is a non matching edge, which goes to u infinity. Now, if, if you look at level at the, the even level, then obviously, its matching edge is already up there. All the non matching edges are going down, but since this is a uh, tree and this is a breakfast sort of tree. Suppose, there was a non matching edge connected to this, that will not be part of the tree. So, I will just try to make it uh, slightly thick. Similarly, we have uh, this edge, which is also not part of the tree, this is not part of the tree. 
nor is this. Now, it is also possible that there is a non matching edge which runs inside the level. Then obviously, this edge is not going to be part of the tree. So, what we notice is that there are three kinds of edges, I will categorize them as follows. From an odd level, there may be an edge going from the vertex of level, uh, the odd level in uh, under consideration to u infinity, we will consider such edges as type A edges. In addition, there may be a non, this is a non matching edge, because our matching edge is obviously moving down to the next level. There may be a non matching edge going to the next level or to a third level or anywhere down there. So, these are all categorized as type A edges. Okay. Then, in an odd level, there might be a matching edge connecting two vertices of the same level that we will label as a type B edge. Similarly, in, in an even level, a non matching edge uh, running across between two vertices of the same level. So, these are type B edges. And from an even level, there may be a non matching edge connecting to the next level. Such edge we will label as type C edge. Now, observe that this accounts for all the edges. Now, here you may want to notice that if there is a vertex in this set and say it is a matched vertex. So, say it has a matching edge. Now, that vertex with which it is matched also cannot be part of this graph, because had it been here, then one of then that vertex could not have been in even level, because that it can only arrive in even level through a matching edge. That vertex could not have been in odd level, because if it was in odd level, then we would have put this vertex in the next level. So, all the matching edges associated with vertices of u infinity must be only running among them. Now, now we will make a claim the claim is that any alternating odd cycle in this graph. Now, please keep in mind that this graph has only, we have assumed there is only one unmatched vertex. If there are more unmatched vertices, then the structure might be of different type, but we are interested in the graph H, which is G mod U and this classification is done for H, then any or alternating odd cycle must start from S and go back to S, because this is the only unmatched vertex. So, the claim is that in H, every alternating odd cycle must pass through at least one 
type d h that our interest in alternately got cycles in h is that they are associated with augmenting uh, paths in the original graph g and we are characterizing these odd cycles by the fact that they always must have at least one b h so how do we prove this claim let us say there is no b edge on the uh, on the cycle let's suppose we call the cycle let x be an alternating odd cycle in h which contains no b type edge so suppose there is one such alternating odd cycle containing no b edge now let's break this b this this uh, x into pieces namely p1 e1 p2 e2 p3 e3 e4 p5 p6 p7 p8 where the edges associated with the the tree edges or type c edges are in this piece and e1 is a type a edge now you have only either the tree edges namely et edges which are these or you have type a edge or you have type c edge so these contain only tree edges tree edges and type c edges and this is a type a edge once again these are either tree edges or these are and so on now to begin with p1 starts at s starting from s there is no type a edge there is no type b edge there is no type c edge so we descend along one of these edges so p1 has at least one edge in it so we proceed along p1 what we notice is that this must continue to descend because we start with an unmatched edge then we must go along the matching edge we are not allowed to go along type b so we cannot go this way we got to go along this or it is possible that we may have gone like this this or we may have taken a c edge now at some point we go along one of the a edges now notice that an a edge is always connected to an odd level and the other end can be at any level could be either immediately the next one or any lower level so in case the p1 path ends at odd level and then if it takes a descending a edge then what we notice is that we will have an unmatched edge followed by an uh, unmatched edge that is not allowed in an alternating path hence it has to be the traversal 
through A must have happened from an even level to an odd level. Then that can happen either from u 2 to u 1 or it could be from u 4 to u 1 if there is an edge like that. So, ascent the rising can happen through then through an a, a edge starting from an even level will go back to an uh, odd level. But the moment we reach here, the next edge has to be a matching edge. So, we start descending. So, the next P 2 must start from a matching edge and it should continue to descend. Once again, if there is a type A edge, then again it should P 2 should terminate at an even level and our E 2 must uh, raise the path to an odd level going up. Now, this process can go on, but we notice is that at no point any A edge <coughs> terminates in S. Hence, it is impossible for this path to reach S. So, this is obvious that unless a B edge is involved in the path, this circuit cannot be completed. Hence, what we have seen here is that every uh, alternating odd cycle must pass through, through a B edge. Now, for example, in this case, this is a possible alternating odd cycle and so is this. So, if we want to detect an alternating odd cycle, then we can begin with an B edge and then try to see if there is a cycle which can complete the path. So, let us just take uh, this situation. Suppose, I have this edge and I start rising from here. It so happens that we have immediately vertex s, then obviously, we have found a um, alternating odd cycle. The same is true in this case, because here is a B edge. I can start rising along the tree paths, uh, tree edges and I will reach here. In this case, I will reach here. But this is a tree and it is possible that as we rise along the tree edges, we may meet at some other vertex. So, in general, if we start from a B edge, we will go along the tree edges and eventually find a common ancestor vertex in the tree. And from here, of course, there is a path to S. Of course, this is not as such, this is not a uh, uh, alternating odd cycle, but this is a structure of interest for us, which we will see in the next class. Another comment is about edges B. Please note that we have in our uh, algorithm, we have identified all the classes u 0, u 1 and so on. Then any edge between any pair of vertices of the same, le same level is a B edge. So, to detect any B edge, all we have to do is take each level and check if there is an edge between any pair of its vertices that will be the set of all the B edges. So, the, to compute the tree and the set of B edges, please note that the this entire process 
is essentially a breadth first search. Hence, the computation of the, this tree takes only order n plus m time, where m is the number of edges, n is the number of vertices. Now, why we are searching? In the algorithm, when we were looking at a vertex v in a level u i minus 1, we were looking at every uh, vertex w adjacent to v. And there, we were checking the level of this vertex. If the level of this vertex is i minus 1, then what we have detected is that there is an edge between v and w, both of them are in the same level. So, while detecting itself, we can identify the type b edges. Hence, it does not take any extra cost to detect all the b edges in the graph. 